Much of the Northeast still cleaning up from Superstorm Sandy, which hit New York especially hard and has been described by some there as one of the worst storms the city has ever faced. There's at least the perception that these type of storms are becoming more frequent and at least some suggestions that climate change could be playing a role in that. To discuss that uh, debate, that issue, that thicket of concerns, Juliet Alperin joins us. Uh, good to have you here. Thanks so much. So what connection, if at any, can and should we draw between storms like Sandy and changes to the climate? When you talk to climate scientists, they make a couple of things clear. One is that you don't say that climate change caused Sandy, that there's not an absolute one-by-one -one connection between climate change and, and this intense storm that we saw. However, there is conclusive evidence that with warmer temperatures, the air can hold more moisture. That does add fuel to storms, and so storms can be more intense as a result of the warmer temperatures that are triggered by greenhouse gas emissions. And we have seen a rise in intense precipitation events, particularly in the Northeast in recent decades. Right, so that means an increase in the frequency because storms just generally are more. Exactly, they're both more, they're more frequent and also more intense. There's more rain coming in a shorter period of time. Uh, and is this another one of these things where the, the scientific community seems pretty certain about it and then it's still hard to make the case in the wider world? Certainly there is somewhat of a disconnect, and I think also, you know, because researchers are inserting these caveats that it becomes very hard to communicate a message on this. So as a result, people are a little confused about what they can interpret from this. Governor Andrew Cuomo mentioned uh, climate change in relation to Sandy, but overall, to some degree, the well seems to be poisoned. We have Al Gore sending tweets. We in the media don't cover it as often. Politicians now almost never talk about it, and the public just doesn't seem that connected to the issue. Right, it's true. It was interesting that, you know, for example, when Governor Cuomo was talking yesterday, he made the point that, you know, if you don't think that there's been a shift in, in the climate recently, then you're just not connected with, with reality. And one of the things he spoke to is he said, we have old infrastructure and old systems that basically we're not prepared to deal with the shift. So I think there are people on the ground who who are grappling with this, who see the shift and, and want us to respond to it. But, you know, the discussion of climate change has been really relatively absent from the presidential campaign. Relatively uh, absent? Relatively absent. Have I you say heard that. a sentence? My <laughs> yes, my caveat is that Mitt Romney made a joke about it when he was accepting the nomination from the Republicans, and then Obama gave it one line in his acceptance speech. That's really the only time that we've seen it come up. It is interesting, though, that, that it's considered often a democratic issue, right. but we have a democratic president who for right. polling reasons or for priority reasons doesn't seem to make yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, what's very interesting is that, and clearly one assumes that his campaign is reading polling data that shows this is not particularly an asset in this campaign. There are some independent pollsters who have argued that it would be an asset with swing voters to talk about this, but there's this perception it's a politically toxic issue. Everyone basically knows that if Obama's reelected, he's going to do more on this issue, and that if Romney's uh, elected, he, he would do less, and they, that those are their positions, and I think they know that the base is recognized recognizing this on both sides. And possibly a storm that hits the, uh, the population and power center of the country will affect the discussion. We'll see. Exactly. Julia, thanks a lot. Thanks so much, Mark.